all journalists rely on their readers for tips. This is super normal, but it is interesting that he has built such a relationship that someone would be willing to potentially take, and I don't know where, who the source was, like a professional risk to get them this information. Yeah. That that shows a lot of confidence in Stephen Crowder. It's citizen journalism. That is so, not citizen journalism. Well, but it, the citizen a plot gave the the journalism to Crowder to amplify the message. That's an aspect of like that's the, modern so, citizen so journalism. So this is I I, I the, the idea that this is citizen journalism was created to discredit people like Stephen Crowder. Mm -hmm. I know this because I was I was I was at these conventions. I was at these conferences and I was speaking at these events, and they kept saying you're just a citizen journalist. And I said no. Citizen journalism is a guy walking his dog, and then all of a sudden he sees a plane in the sky on fire. So he pulls out his phone and films, and it crashes, and he goes whoa. And then he tweets a video. Mm -hmm. I guess there's no way to know who it was that, that delivered that message. Didn't to Steve. They but didn't is, give it to Fox. But this, but, but that's meaningless. The New York Times has sources all day, every day. Someone in law enforcement releases information. The New York Times publishes it. Steven Crowder is no different from the New York Times. Granted, he is a comedian on YouTube, but his news apparatus that got this information and published it is the same as WikiLeaks mm -hmm. uh, uh, system, the same as New York Times' system. You have someone who liaises with a source. The source provides information. The information is vetted and then reported. I just think it's cool that this is something he has built, right? When he was posting videos initially on YouTube, I'm sure he did not expect to be in the position he is today, which is that he decided what the news was going to be out. I mean, he came out with this on a Monday for a reason. This is going to lead the news cycle, at least for the next couple of days, probably through the end of the week. It, it, and it this may actually force the release of the full full manifesto, which is probably the only way we would have gotten it out. So the one of the ideas that's being put out on, on, on X on social media is that these are select pages and that in reality, while everyone's highlighting the anti white sentiment that seems to have motivated the shooter, there's way more in there. And this person hates everybody and uses slurs for everybody. But the selective page, the selective release right. would, would make it seem like it was one sided. Yeah, I mean, I think that's reasonable. I I wouldn't be surprised if it's. You know, not that I want to make predictions about such a dark document, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a consistent anti-white theme because I think, as far as I can tell, Audrey Hale was white. And I think a lot of people who are raised in uh, or who are coming up in progressive spheres are trained to hate themselves, especially if they're well, white. Well, if you look at what was said in it, the, the, the perpetrator says things like private schools and fancy khakis. And she attended it, that school. It was very Marxist-esque. It was very right. oppressor versus oppressed. Exactly. So she was taking this back to the oppressors and she was going to get the justice and she hoped she had a high kill count. She said things like that in the that's document. Right. And it, th it's, that's where the mark, like I, I posted about something critical about public schools the other day about how they're teaching Marxism to our kids. And somebody commented and said, they don't teach Marxism at public schools. I'm like, you don't explicitly have to give out a book by Marx to be teaching Marxism. It's this idea of this oppressor versus this oppressed thing, this critical theory thing. And when you just ram that down people's heads, you end up like militarizing and radicalizing an entire generation. Yeah, they indoctrinate people with Marxism. Right. They don't, unfortunately, as far as I know, actually teach the right. theories of Marxism enough. They should probably teach that more so that if, you can realize if you were being indoctrinated. No, no teaching they, in public school. If they taught... <laughs> actual Marxist theory, along with history of Marxism, the children would be crying by the end of the day and say, why would anyone ever do such a thing? Those poor people, the hundred, hundred million who are 1958, who, who 1962, died. great leap forward, hundred million. It's just, it's so easy More to be like, too, we're yes, all in yep. this together. Let's go, all of us. And then once the revolution yeah. happens, it's Marxism like, Marxism killed now, more who's people in between 1958 and 1962 than white supremacism did between 1619 and 2019.